Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to another episode of Gameplay and Chill. Now you've probably noticed something immediately, and that's that I've heard your cries for more Genji footage. Everyone loves watching Genji. Part of the reason why you don't see that much from me is my Genji isn't that great. And you might notice, yeah, with this match, we're going to get more Genji than any one man can reasonably handle. You might also recognize some of the names on the other team, especially if you follow the pro scene. We're going against a pre-made. We're going against a pre-made with six Genjis, in fact. And it's going to be an interesting little game. It's going to be kind of a silly game. And let's talk about Genji. Let's talk about Genji's place in the game right now. Because Genji is the big driving force for balance at the moment. He is the the cornerstone of pretty much every team. It's why you don't see Tracer that often. It's why you don't see... It's why you see Winston a lot. It's why you see Zenyatta a lot. Which means you get a knock-on effect of not seeing Fire that much, which always makes me sad. But it's going to be an interesting game. Now this is kind of what happens in some Hyelo games. It's very interesting to me when you get matched up against pros, because sometimes you get these very serious games, you get people who are very, very try-hard and hate losing and get really upset if someone isn't pulling the weight. But quite often you get these games as well, where a lot of the players know each other, a lot of the players have played against each other repeatedly, and you get these fairly chilled out, quite fun games. So we're going to see an interesting thing now. I got absolutely mullered there because they have two Torbjorns and I'm going to spend most of this game trying to snipe turrets. Now, I'm not going to like excuse my Genji play. My Genji play is fairly weak. Part of the reason why I can't improve it is because, again, I play at a high elo and at a high elo there's a lot of incredibly good Genji players and that, oh, missing that dash cost me badly. If I hit that dash, it would have killed Torbjorn, be able to dash somewhere else, carry on snowballing from there. That makes me sad. But what you see is you see a lot of these really high-end Genji players who can just murder teams once they get rolling. They can really snowball out of control. And as such, I always feel very pressured when I play Genji to try and live to that performance and don't have a chance to. And this brings me on to something interesting, which is something that Jeff Kaplan, he released a, a statement fairly recently. He did one of his community spotlight updates. Bloody turrets. Uh, if only I was playing Zarya, but no, no, we're going with the Genjis. And this is literally half the game for me. And oh, Jesus, Molten Core. Just can't fight him like that and get sniped completely out of the blue by Lucio, who's just firing into there. Oh well. But yeah, Kaplan talked about something very interesting, which is how to sort out a ranked system for Overwatch. Because Kaplan first addressed ranked from a very competitive standpoint. Like, he thought, okay, what's the most competitive way to play Overwatch? And that's, that's six versus six, right? You get six people who know each other, who can practice together against six other people. That's by far the most competitive way of playing. Now... Of course, when people say rank, they generally think of like rank Q in Dota or rank Q in League of Legends, rank Q in Counter-Strike, for example. And those have solo queues where you go in on your own and then you get matched with a bunch of other people and it can be very frustrating. And I think he's very wary of having that frustration, but I think I think he's just going to have to get over it. Like I think there's just an expectation for a solo queue. And I really want a, a ranked system simply because it will then split the community into these casual matches and these higher level um, serious matches. So you can have things like Hex Genji, Mono Genji, I guess you could call it as well. Hex, Hex Genji doesn't work very well. But you can have the Mono Genji matches. It means I can have matches where I feel happy practicing Genji, practicing Widowmaker, for example, where I don't get to play as often as I like. I try and play her when I can, but she doesn't work in a lot of situations and she's very situational as a pick. Even though I think there's a lot of very cool tricks you can do with Widowmaker in this game. We're seeing it a lot from the pro games where you can do like this air shot where you use the um, zip wire to launch yourself into the air and that will give you an angle on someone that will get you the shot. And I can see some really cool trick shots coming out of that and really cool attack angles coming out of that from Widowmaker. But quite often it just feels like another pick would just work better. I'm also looking forward to having more people in the game in general, like, I am getting very used to playing against these high-end players and it's incredibly frustrating because, like in this case, this McCree, he knew to stop firing. And this happens a lot when they're playing Zarya as well, I've been looking to try and get a few good Zarya games. Uh, just really good examples of Zarya play, just to have alongside the, the guide I put out. And I'm yet to have like a really solid, well-rounded Zarya game. I've had one or two, one I think I didn't record, one I did record. And I want to have games that go alongside the guides I make just so I can talk freely and sort of say, hey, yeah, this is this is applying this principle, this is applying this idea. But yeah, with this one, this match was just silly. This match was very silly indeed. 
Now, we do actually manage to get this first point because there's an interesting thing that happens on this first point with Torbjorn, especially. The first point is very difficult to defend because the area that you're defending, this courtyard area in front of the temple that we're about to get to just through these gates, that's where you're generally defending. And the point itself is kind of sequestered off behind these walls. So it's easy to hide from the area you're defending behind those walls. And as such, Torbjorn is actually fairly ineffective if you just run by or you find a flanking path. Here on this second point, it's a lot harder. Now here's something interesting, you can actually snipe Torbjorn's turret if you can just hit the gun, so I'm just very carefully trying to shuriken it down. Now the big problem we're going to have here is that we are 6 Genji against 2 Torbjorns, which isn't too bad in itself, I mean, we're not the most efficient at killing turrets, but they also have these mobile pieces that are just very dangerous and, oh bloody hell, just surprise dwarf out of nowhere, I didn't see him coming, Jesus. And of course they also have uh, Punpu on Mei, who just destroys Genji, I mean I have memories of BlizzCon where they unveil Genji, everyone wants to play Genji and then someone picks Mei and just ruins all your fun. We also have the major problem where our ultimate doesn't do anything here, because if we fired it off and charged into the middle we'd get mullered by turrets. If we try and chase people down then we get killed by most of the enemy team and we get fragmented, we wouldn't really be able to do anything with it, and so we have a really hard time. Now I try and bait the high noon but no, it doesn't fall for it. Luckily he drops behind that little lantern area, that little pillar, otherwise I would have probably died. And here I just needed to step back. It's kind of interesting, even with the repair changes, that Genji struggles a little bit at killing a turret in good time. You just need someone else hitting it a little bit. But there's definitely more effective ways than Punpu lurking. Mei just lurking in the rafters, waiting to free someone to death. It's it's terrifying, trust me. And, ah, oh, I see, I'm trying to snipe at this thing. I'm waiting for someone to shoot at me, but no, no one does. They're, they're canny enough to hold fire while I put Reflect up. Now this would be very nice if I had an effective ultimate, like if I had a really strong good range ultimate, and here we see Molten Korgoth just to save the turret. I can just stay here and snipe at it. If I needed to build up my ultimate this would be amazing, but alas, I'm now getting harassed by a dwarf upon high. He's actually quite dangerous from this angle, and I'm trying to pick off his turret, but no, he just lands the headshot and takes me down. One shot, one kill from Torbjorn. Most of the team are trying to engage from this flank. This is actually kind of dangerous. I've noticed this happens on Haranomura a lot, where people get very focused on tunneling one side. And what I find is you generally want like a 4-1-1 one, one split. You generally want one person on one flank, one person on the other flank, and then four elsewhere pushing in, making themselves a nuisance from other angles, basically. Get some nice juicy headshots on Torbjorn here, but of course he can just retreat safely, and I can't follow him! I can't follow him for the assassination, because there's two turrets in there, even if I could defend against one, I can't defend against the other. We're just trying to find where these turrets are. I'm gonna try and spam them down. This is gonna be my job for most of this game, actually, is we try and- Oh, Jesus, I found the turrets. And of course we don't have a healer, so I have to, like, sit and wait for health packs. Unfortunate. Well, yeah, it's an interesting place right now with the meta. Like, I can see Genji being nerfed. I think one- Oh, that felt nice. That felt real nice. He just shot himself in the head. One place I really would like to see Genji change, and this is where we, I try and, like, we try and cover each other. Of course he uses Molten Core and I use my Reflect. There's just no point finding a turret in Molten Core. But yeah, one place that I would like to see Genji nerfed is in his Reflect. In his Reflect he's immune to damage from the front and it's incredibly annoying. That means Reinhardt can't kill him, it means you can't melee him. I would kind of like it if that invulnerability went away. I'd like it if he was vulnerable to projectiles and he was able to reflect projectiles and do all that nonsense, but if you just meleeed him in the face, you'd kill him. Basically, like, you should be able to melee through it, it shouldn't be like immortality time for Genji, and I think that nerf alone would make a huge difference in his survivability. The fact that he has these four seconds of free survival is just insane. It makes him so much stronger than Tracer, for example, because it's harder to catch him out with a sudden kill and stop him from just, you know, reflecting and then dashing away. Landing some tasty shots, there's Widow in the back, oh, not quite, not quite, and then of course Pun Pun. Pun Poo, sorry, Pun Pun. Pun Pun's a cuter name, but Pun Poo is a good name as well. I really do like his name. Ah, uh, on May, just chilling out, keeping it cool. I'm trying to think of just more shit puns. I I know plenty, but they're all variants and like keeping it cool. And here, I just dumping my ultimate because why not? Of course, Soldier 76 heals up, but we're just circling each other and killing each other. Very silly. As now, come on! Ooh, oh yes. Just, just timed it wrong. I've been in that guy's shoes, I've been in Mafu, if you ever watch this, I've been in your shoes. 
I've tried that timing before and I've messed it up myself, so I know exactly how it feels. And oh god, sudden, sudden Soldier 76 blindness. But yeah, this is an example of a game that I, I kind of like it when this sort of thing happens. When people just relax and have fun with the game and have fun messing around. We're not trying to win necessarily, like if we want to win, I think one or two of us just needed to change off and then this becomes much more effective. Mono anything is bad, but when you start mixing in one or two more heroes, it gets very interesting. It gets very fun as well. I think the only time mono anything really works is Winston, and Winston's just a whole matter of problems on his own. And again, this this goddamn Molten Core turret is just immortal. It's just no point fighting it. Torbjorn is interesting. It's actually interesting to see him pop up in the pro scene. Now, again, a few of the EU games I watched, I've mostly been watching EU because EU is a little less cheesy. Just a little bit less cheesy. And I know most of the players, I recommend. I recognize most of the players, and I'm just telling everyone, yeah, I like my channel. People ask for more Genji gameplay, so let, let's give them Genji. Now, I'm seeing, you know, Torbjorn occasionally popping up, like on maps like on uh, King's Row, for example, he tends to pop up. Maps where Symmetra also likes to hang around. You get these sort of 300 hit point heroes coming out now because they have the buff well 325, because they have the 75 armor and 50 shields for Symmetra and become that much stronger. Especially with the Zenji combo. Like, if you. I like going at Zenji, it's either Zenji or Genyata. I prefer Zenji, it, I think it just sounds cooler than Genyata. So I'm gonna call it Zenji, and yeah, player of the game, May, just just keeping it chill, keeping it cool, keeping it good. But this this is fun for me because these guys are a pre-made, right? Like I I went up against a pre-made last night as well, just to regale you with tales, and they were tryharding, and it was boring as hell. Well, it wasn't they weren't tryharding? They were just playing to a normal level, and they just crushed us on the pile. But next up, we're gonna have this match on Hanamura as well. We're going to go back to Hanamura, but from the other side and on the other side of the coin for the Shimada brothers, because Hanzo doesn't get enough love. Hanzo doesn't get enough time. Now, the first thing you do as Hanzo on any map is you try and put up the sonic arrow to see where the enemy team is attacking from. So no one's coming from that flank, so I know they're all coming from here, so let's just shove out some damage, get a shitload of hurt on Winston. Of course, that's going to be healed up nice and quick, but 30% of my ult already feels real damn nice. Senyala covering my retreat. Making sure I can get out nice and safely, and again, just putting damage on this Winston. He's a big, easy-to-hit target. And if I can get my ultimate up nice and quickly, it's always good. And you know, Winston just doing the usual dancing in and out of his shield, being a massive pain in the ass as I trade damage here. But here, this is where Sonic Arrow really pays off. You get this vision past his temple wall, and it lets us see exactly what the enemy team's doing. It's also very easy to get reflect off the back wall there, so I can just keep reflecting arrows and hit people behind this wall. Now, usually they're all camping behind there, so I just fire an arrow through there, just to see if I can push them out into the middle, or see if I can pick up any easy kills. Unfortunately, I don't get anyone with that, but I built up the arrow so fast, I thought, why not? And it's just, you know, I'm probably gonna have another one by the time that we are able to fight again, or by the time we really need it. So again, just providing information, this is where Hanzo is fairly strong, if you can get that info. He manages to fire that arrow, and I'm still not sure exactly how he landed that hit. I didn't even see him. And this is where a kill cam would have been nice, but I've turned mine long, off long ago. It's just very nice to have, you know, be able to see what the team is doing and know what's happening. In other words, just breaking some pots of Hanzo's old home, and here I decide... Okay, so there's a shortcut you can take on this map, where if you jump, and this works as Hanzo, if you jump there, you can hit the wall and run up it. But without the banister breaking, it's very risky, I find. Um, I've had one or two instances where I've died trying to do it, so I just thought, no, sod it, I can get back to the fight in plenty of time. Don't have to worry too much here about rushing or anything. This is a dodgy arrow, I tried to fire it so it would bounce through the building. Didn't quite land it, but do manage to land this hit here. Ah, uh, just getting easy damage as Hanzo is always satisfying. He does a shitload of damage, it's just kind of unreliable, unfortunately. I do have some good games with Hanzo, like it is fun playing Hanzo. I do like him. It's just, he's so unreliable and you, universally you generally want a Widowmaker just for, like, reliability. But stuff like this is nice, this is where Hanzo really shines when you get that information up and you can see when they're moving, then you can land these guaranteed ammo arrows, get that guaranteed damage, and especially now that I have Dragon Strike up, I'm just waiting for Reinhardt or waiting for May to do something, and then I can follow in off the back of it and get some easy kills. Otherwise, May's putting the wall up so they're gonna start being forced around the choke point, and that's actually a problem for me, and that... Oh, that was so irritating. Luckily, I do manage to fire it off just where I need it. Thankfully, you can turn when firing the arrow now. You used to not be able to. 
And what happened there was someone knocked me with a rocket. I just got bumped slightly to the side and couldn't aim exactly where I wanted it, but did fire it through the temple wall, did manage to hit some people. Here's an interesting angle. It's actually quite a fun one. It's a good source of reliable damage. You're probably not going to kill anyone with it. You're probably just going to hit a few people with it. So it's just a good source of a little bit of extra harassment damage. Here I'm just trying to, you know, bait out the, the Lucio positioning. And this is a beautiful moment, if it's the moment I'm thinking of. Because Reinhardt's been holding on to his ultimate. And I think he's just waiting for the right time. Now that's probably Winston behind us being Winston and being annoying. So I fire off my dragon, he fires off his uh, Fiatta, and that happens. And that's just when things sync up. And Mercy, Mercy knows she's done. Let's just put her out of her misery. Poor Mercy. I'm definitely going to put up some videos of Mercy. Like, I think my Mercy is actually one of the better in Europe. And that, that's her bold statement, and I don't play Mercy that often, but when I do, I feel so powerful. I feel so effective on Mercy. And I think she's just really underrated for how strong she is. With Zenyada sort of coming into the fore, I think people are missing out on how influential Mercy can be in short periods of time. Her healing is faster, and as such, her damage amp is just up all the time. And also, I think people have a mindset problem with Mercy, where they try and heal too quickly, basically, and don't do the right things with Mercy. So I'm definitely going to do some videos on Mercy fairly soon, get some her, some of her gameplay up as, I don't know, mini tutorials, I guess, while I work on the next Easy to Learn. I might do the next Easy to Learn on Mercy, in fact, just so, just to have that out there because I think she's underrated, and I want to really refine um, my Tracer play, for example, before I put Tracer out there, really refine Reaper play before I put Reaper out there, and maybe put those up closer to release as well as interest in the game sort of peaks and make sure that, you know, I'm hitting that stride. But here, I'm a little bit worried now because I can hear, you know, 76 ult going off. Luckily it's finished off and only one or two deaths, but... Lucia, what are you doing here? What, you should be with your team, you shouldn't be here. But someone's on the point, we need to deal with this, it's probably an angry gorilla. And here, we can see Winston outplaying me. Just staying in this bubble, holding left mouse button if I walk forward. Of course, he walks back and it, it's all very frustrating. Shades on Genji. Shades is a really good player. He's actually one of the better Genjis I see. So if he ever sees this, hats off to you, man. You play a goddamn mean Genji. And yeah, we, we're seeing a little bit of salt out of Oba. Oba. Oh, Oba. You're, you're just a touch salty at times. It's interesting because there is a mini community in the beta. You just get to know people and get to know their habits. And here, Winston again. High skill Winston play, leaving on the point for Angus Ultimate. Luckily we have a Zenyatta, which does make it easy, but Hanzo into Winston isn't that great. Oh, Jesus, that knocking around is so frustrating. And again, that, that bubble is just so frustrating. What I'd like to see for Winston is just the bubble. Oh, pain! That bubble taken down by about 250 hit points. Just make it that little bit easier to break for everyone. Rather than having to rely on, like, Junkrat, for example, which has become a popular counter pick, uh, to break it. Yeah, going back to the point, just holding steady. Hanzo can be very useful on this point, I find, just because there are basically three main avenues of attack. You have the left side, the upper left side, you have the, the main entrance, and then you have the right side, the balcony. And Hanzo gives you vision on basically one of those. As Hanzo, you need to be looking to put your sonic arrows in places where the enemy team is massing up. And the moment you see them preparing, you want to have your sonic arrow up and ready to go. Make sure you know exactly where they are. So we know that, for example, we know now that they're not out there. And again, just firing this uh, scatter arrow off doorways has become a sort of special of mine. I love doing it. Just getting those corner bounces have killed so many people doing that. Finding the, just the little edge, because you've got to remember, like, the arrow has a curve when you launch it. It curves vertically. But horizontally, there's no variance. So as long as you are in line with the, the target, you're going to hit it no matter what. It's just the vertical dip or the vertical arch that you need to be careful of. But here you can see, again, we can see that there's three of them up there. Now this is not the best angle to fly for me, especially with Winston out skilling me behind me. And yeah, oh Jesus, I get taken out. Luckily we have Zenyatta on the point. And Zenyatta and Reinhardt are going to be difficult to shift off, but the problem is they're not going to have much killing power. Unfortunately, so we need to be careful. We need to get some threats out there and like we have May for example as well Who's not, not high on the killing power? And that's where our, our team really lacks now I'm gonna try and get the scatter arrow into that tunnel, but unfortunately 76 runs back Thankfully he does get picked up by the Zenyatta. Zenyatta doing a shitload of damage One of his main advantages of course is the fact that he can kill the hell out of people And May gun down gun down after thanking someone. This is what manners get you not really sure why I fired that Sonic Arrow, and here Genji goes right through me, I can't- where- where is he? Where- where'd that ninja go? 
I just got cut in half and couldn't see him and then shot in the face by a cowboy. Now this is going to be a real difficult hold. Luckily this is where May excels and luckily I've respawned and have my ultimate. I make a mistake here, I should have just waited a little bit longer for the dragon to travel through. It does disappear the moment I swap. Luckily I do manage to get out here with 76. 76 is actually really good for point holds as well, just because that healing field lets you stay on the point a little bit longer. We do manage to get some kills and this is what matters here. We're running out, we're trading, but we're trading where we respawn faster. And as long as you're constantly contesting and constantly trading, you will get the point back. That said, they had a really good push here. A lot of people don't rate how powerful it is to capture the thirds, the, the sort of um, three parts of the capture point. So you can see the capture point reset in the top of your screen. It only goes back two thirds now. So they only have to capture it for a third. That's huge, that's absolutely huge. And I think people really vastly underestimate the power of capturing one third at a time and basically making the point of each assault to try and capture a single third. It's great when you capture everything, but that's not always going to be the case and it's always good to try and at least try and get that third out. And I've definitely seen people give up on attacks a bit too early and again just outskilled by Winston here as he runs in and out of his immortal shield meleeing me to death. Oh Winston. And yes, yes, I get it, I'll be the first person to advocate like Winston's skill comes in positioning and comes in engaging properly and disengaging properly. Right now it just feels a little bit too easy for Winston to engage and then disengage safely and not get punished for it in any major way. Not punished for it in a way like Reinhardt gets punished if he charges, not punished for it in a way that Zarya, if she overextends and doesn't have a barrier up, gets punished. Roadhog definitely gets punished easily. Winston just feels very unpunishable just for the amount of damage he does, just for the amount of work he can do on his own. Now I'm gonna, I've am gonna i taken this balcony, this is one of my favourite things to do at 76, is when you have your ultimate nearly ready and mine's gonna charge up by the time they go for this final push, especially if Winston's jump in, it means I have my ultimate good to go. So they are coming in and my first target is gonna be this far, because far is gonna deal a shitload of damage from above and she's my primary threat. Once she's down I can clean everyone up on the point, I just need to focus people down, and as long as people are dying, it's fine. The two Winston's going up. You can see they almost get it. They almost get the point. They're trying to knock us off it, so we stop contesting and then capture it. Luckily, we have May here, and unfortunately, she goes down. We have Reaper as well, really good at stalling. Can go with Wraith form and stall things out. I'm still not keen on that feature. I'd still actually like it removed. It's just incredibly frustrating to have these characters who you can't stop contesting. Grace, they're trying to get in here, but doesn't quite manage it. Eats a rocket to the face for her trouble. Alright, thanks for watching these two matches. I hope you like the, the mono Genji and see some weak ass Genji play. I'm looking to get more Tracer and Reaper gameplay up and running as well. I'm trying to get some good games with those. And also, there should be some Zarya gameplay coming soon with a more educational bent on it. But this has been gameplay and chill. This has been some interesting matches to say the least. Some fun hands I play, some, an interesting Genji game. I'll try and get a proper Genji match for you guys, but Genji's not my strongest. Otherwise, toodles.